those funny corner pieces. Four days since I did the strawcrete pad. It's dry enough for the mould to come off now. So I've turned it upside down so you can see the top face. And there we are. Firming up nicely. This is the straw creep pad in position now. It's just resting on the tiles. It's not anchored or anything. It's just going to be the weight of the wall that's going to go onto this face, which is going to hold it in place. And I'm just going to make a simple piece of shuttering to guide where the stones are going to go. So this is coated chipboard at the back. But because this is just plain untreated chipboard on the sides, I've put a polythene sheet on it just so that it won't draw the water out too rapidly from the, the mortar. So all that's done and I'm just going to put a strap across the front when I've taken the stove out of the way. And then that's it, ready to go. And we'll start putting stones on. Okay, so stove's out. This is where we're going to put the stones and these will guide so that the wall is going to stay nice and vertical and the back None of the mortar is going to drop out and fall down anywhere. It's all going to be trapped nicely at the rear. So it'll just make everything neat. Well, I get this short straw washing the stones. But at least solve the dinner problem by nourishing soup. I'm just trying to get the first layer of stones laid in there before I put the mortar on so I can see how it's going to shape up and it's a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle without the picture so at the moment I'm looking for one of those funny corner pieces and I think I'll keep looking until I can find the right one but once I've got it laid out I'll be able to put the mortar in and then build the wall up but it's like anything, the first layer is going to be the hardest until I get the pattern right in my mind. But there's lots of pieces here, so I'll just have to keep looking and playing. Aha! That could work. It's a bit of tie across there. So have you, got, have you got to plan it all? Sorry. Well, I think just the first layer. I just want to get something started. Um, but the next layer I will obviously try and get it so I've got stones crossing. A bit like on brickwork. I don't want to have uh, just joints going up which are not connected. So I've got to lay it correctly. And I still want to have a nice appearance normally to the sides and a little bit, the stove's going to be here, so we're not going to see a lot of this, but nevertheless I would like big stones which are going to carry the heat into the mass. So it's so it's aesthetic and also, Functional. so it works, yeah? Yeah, okay. yeah it's got to yeah. work either way. Okay. the hydrated lime gun in. So that's six to one. That's six of these buckets of sand to one of these buckets of lime. Now I'm just going to dry mix it so I get an even colour of dry mortar mix. So all effectively all the particles of sand are coated with the lime. And then we'll make it up into a mortar. This is a soft mix, six to one. I've, I know that you can use up to nine parts of sand to one part of lime for high temperature work. Uh, firebacks, for example. The lime's good because the mortar remains elastic and it will allow and compensate for any 
expansion whereas a cement mortar would tend to crack so hydrated lime is much better much more useful I feel oh, it okay. just has a nice uh, smooth elastic feel and it will come off the trowel nice and cleanly and it will retain its slug like shape when I put it in. Right. I think cement mortars always feel lifeless to me. Yeah, it's changed. I've taken the stones out now from the first layer, got the mortar mixed so I'm going to now put them back in on a bed of mortar and where needed to seat them in better I've got my trusty rubber faced hammer to help them find their position. So that's it, I'm going to start. And a good bed of mortar. And all this will squidge out when I put the the stones on obviously but I'm trying to get it and this is what the shuttering is for is to keep everything in place but, <clears throat> perhaps you should make a speech for the first stone going <laughs> we'll get the lady mayoress to come along very generous there. I'm not putting anything between the vertical joints at the moment because as in this case there ain't a vertical joint on this side so it's just going to go in on the bed of mortar. Now possibly when I take this cover off I may have to point this face but just for the ease of doing it at the moment I think it'll be fine as it stands. Let's see now. Yeah, that's okay. And I'm going to fill the voids between the stones with smaller stones where I can. And that's to make sure that the mass is as high as possible. thing with the lime mortar as well is it's, it doesn't stain the stonework as much as a cement will so you can scrub the face of the stone afterwards and it will lift any uh, mortar off it quite nicely and that's another reason why I like it you can cover up your mistakes better right. so now I've got a few gaps there which I'm going to put some small stones in and that's layer one done. Yeah. So I'm going to now put quite a lot of mortar in this 
in these joints and then push the stones in and it will squidge out the sides. Just cleaning up the face of the, the stone uh, because I'm having to put a lot of mortar into these joints and it's squeezing out when I'm hammering it down. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that the whole unit is homogenous, that there's a continuous thread of mortar all the way around. This is, also, this is going to conduct heat, so I want the mediums to conduct heat to be as continuous as possible. Well, I finished this uh, yesterday um, and it's had at least 24 hours to dry. So I'm going to take the shuttering off to let the air get all the way around and have a look at all the joints between the stones and see what needs tidying up. So let's start by taking away this. You can see how the, the mortar has stuck to the shuttering. So what I'm going to do now is just trim off the excess with the edge of a pointing trowel. Because as it's lying mortar it is still quite friable. And now I'm just going to brush the joints with a wire brush just to clean out the surplus. And I'll We'll then go along the whole face of the joints with a clean cloth and it will smooth everything back. It's been three days since I've put the last stone in place and the mortar's drying very nicely. So I'm ready to put the stone into place and we'll try it. But what I'm really pleased with is the way that the shuttering has worked to help get this nice straight corner to the block. So I'm pleased with the way that's worked. It's the first time I've tried that, but uh, yeah, successful. So I'm going to put the stove into place. We've got the nice clean chimney, and then we'll light it and see what happens. So we've been running now for about 20 minutes. Uh, already the stones at the back are getting warm, uh, but I can tell you that there's there's no conduction obviously through to the back yet. It's going to take a long time for the, uh, the heat to get through to the rear. But they are warming up slowly. Um, but we'll just leave it to, to go now over several hours and several days and uh, see what happens. So that's it. The project's finished. Fire's going and the room's nice and warm. The film has been a bit long, but I'm sure you can understand why, because there's so much gone into this. And I've been sitting here all evening editing this film. It's a cool evening here, and I've not felt the slightest bit cold, and I'm sure it's thanks to this great new storage heater. And I also want to say that I'm sitting in one of Andy's pallet wood chairs, which will be another project coming to you very soon at a channel called Organic Mechanic. And if you've waited this long and watched all the way to the, through to the end, thank you very, very much for watching. Thanks for watching.